Welcome to the Project Finance Modeling Course. In this tutorial, we will be talking about the debt service coverage ratio in Project Finance. Debt service coverage ratio, or DSCR, is widely used in project finance models. It is a debt matrix used to analyze the project's ability to repay debt. In project finance, the definition of DSCR is cash flow available for debt service or CFADS divided by the debt service. DSCR is a ratio generated by the project and then this project's DSCR is compared to DSCR required by the lenders. DSCR reflects the ability of the project to service the debt. High DSCR generated by the project means that the project is generating cash flows that significantly exceed the debt principal and interest payments. It is possible in such situation to increase the leverage of the project. DSCR below 1 means CFADS is insufficient to cover debt service. As a result, the project's debt has to be reduced to reduce the debt service. It should be noted that DSCR is a forward-looking matrix. What I mean by that is, it is based on the projected cash flow numbers, and if the projections are made incorrectly, the DSCR will also be incorrect. Typically, loan agreements specify in financial covenants the minimum required DSCR, along with other ratios that the project shall meet. After financial close, the lenders will use these ratios as part of the project monitoring and control functions. Where ratios do not achieve the levels required, the lenders will have a series of possible interventions, including blocking dividend distribution, sweeping cash from existing accounts, applying reserve account money to debt service. If these breaches persist, eventually, such breaches will amount to events of default permitting the lenders to cancel outstanding loan amounts or suspended existing loans. It may also permit them to increase the interest margin, require compensation of the lenders for additional investigation costs, and other fees and fines. Therefore, those ratios are extremely important. At the stage of projections and financial modeling, the minimum required DSCR determines the debt size, project's leverage, and, therefore, equity's valuation. CFADS over loan repayment term divided by the minimum required DSCR is equal to the debt principal and interest payments. This comes from our definition of DSCR. Taking present value of those principal and interest payments will give us the initial loan value, which determines the leverage of the project and hence equities IRR. So, when the project's DSCR is higher than the required DSCR, the project has higher debt capacity and can accommodate higher leverage. When the opposite is true and the project's DSCR is lower than the required DSCR, the project has lower debt capacity and shall reduce its leverage. The minimum required DSCR are different across industries, reflecting the riskiness of the industries and projects. Most recent transactions have seen the fouling DSCR across industries. The DSCR can be calculated using several different methods. Current DSCR, which is semi-annual CFADS, over semi-annual debt service, backward and forward looking DSCR. Average and weighted average DSCR. So, let's review how our current DSCR is calculated. Our timeline is a six months periods timeline, which is typical timeline for project finance models at operation stage. So, the first ingredient in the current DSCR calculation is CFADS over debt repayment term. Then, we need our debt service, which is debt principal repayment and interest expense. DSCR formula is CFADS divided by the debt service. So, we have our debt service coverage ratio for period 1. We repeat the calculations for other periods. We have to select the lowest DSCR that our project produces during the debt repayment term. Then, we have to compare the lowest project's DSCR to the lender's required DSCR. If the lowest project's DSCR is above the required DSCR, then the project meets the lender's requirement. Now, let's review how 12 months backward looking DSCR is calculated. Again, our timeline is 6 months periods timeline, and we have our CFADS over debt repayment term. Then, 
we have to calculate the 12 months backward looking CFADs. In period 1, we don't have a 12 months period yet. Therefore, we won't calculate backward looking CFADs for it. In period 2, our 12 months backward looking CFADs is the sum of CFADs in period 1 and period 2. In period 3, our 12 months backward looking CFADs is the sum of CFADs in period 2 and period 3. And we continue our 12 months backward looking CFADs calculation in this manner. Next, we have our debt service. Now, we have to calculate 12 months backward looking debt service. In period 2, our 12 months backward looking debt service is the sum of debt service in period 1 and period 2. And we continue our 12 months backward looking debt service calculation in this way. 12 months backward looking DSCR is ratio of 12 months backward looking CFADs and debt service. Then, we have to select the lowest backward looking DSCR that our project produces during the debt repayment term and compare it to the lender's required DSCR. Eventually, it is the loan's term sheet and agreement which specifies which DSCR to use, how, and when to calculate it. In the next lesson, we will be modeling the different types of debt service coverage ratio in our project finance model.